Israel is a sometimes country in the Middle East. Um, Israel has, is, is, without any introduction, uh, has been engaging in an ongoing war, genocide, police action, whatever the fuck you want to call it, with Palestine and to now a, a lesser extent, Lebanon in the north. Uh, as part of its nebulous, ongoing defense of its people in which Israel feels justified in doing literally anything that comes to Israel's mind at any given point in the day. Um, it just If you do anything that results in violence, it is to save the lives of Israelis, no matter whether or not there are 700 questions that have to be answered between how you justify that and what happened. The most recent one of these little events uh, happened in Lebanon a couple days ago, and now yesterday as well, which is why I was confused. Um, a bunch of pagers exploded all at once. And then yesterday, a bunch of walkie-talkies exploded all at once, right? Uh, which gives the impl implication that Israel was using timed explosives, um, timed booby trap explosives in order to uh, attack targeted Hezbollah members. No idea how they figured out who the targets were or if they even remotely tried to control where or when these explosions might happen, or if they could confirm that the people had the things on them before they all blew up at once. Um, it, it's really kind of kind of confusing exactly what's going on. So I'm going to read some stories, just double-checking everything, um, and we, we're we going to get into what maybe sort of happened with these Israeli pagers. I've heard a few different suggestions as to what might have occurred. Some people think that they're overheating lithium batteries with... Um, some sort of malware signal of some sort that's either built into the devices or triggered through communications. I have no idea how that works. Um, I don't know how explosive lithium actually is. I saw a few demonstrations. It's not particularly impressive compared to actual explosives. <laughs> it might make a little pop and a bang, but um, a guy was, I saw one guy breaking open a lithium battery with a knife. If that's the same sort of lithium battery and it only goes that hard, we're not talking lithium. I, I, I would I would highly doubt it unless they found a new version of lithium that explodes as 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 hard and as dangerously as as composition B or C. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So what we have first is ba -ba -da -da, a why why did Israel blow up thousands of Hezbollah pagers by Fred Kaplan, September eighteenth. It's from yesterday. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 on slate.com. Uh, I chose this mostly because it seems like they've gotten some pictures of the devices, which I've wanted to see the most. Uh, we're going to go and switch over here. Solar panels also have lithium in them. Hmm. I'm not hyper. They're kind of at war with all Muslims, aren't they? No, like not really. <sighs> Lebanon's not like all Muslim by a site. Like Lebanon's pretty mixed. I mean, there's, there's, I think it's majority Muslim, but even in that, Muslim majority it's not there's a lot of deviations inside kind of with anything so you know you have Sunni Shia to, to whatever breakdown that is but um, Lebanon also has a pretty sizable Jewish and Catholic population the Jewish population is actually not very sizable but the cat there's a or not Catholic Christian um, there's there's Christian Lebanese um, and you know they, they all live in they can I think a lot of them live in segregated neighborhoods from what I remember my buddy who lived there for a while told me most of this stuff um, but like Lebanon being like, like confusing Lebanon with a place like Saudi Arabia, which is like a hyper, like a, almost like a caliphate, you know, emirate type place. It, it, it's not like that. It's, uh, not liberal necessarily, but a considerably more liberal place, um, than your average, like, you know, Emirati type, um, Muslim nation. You know what I'm saying? I won't get too, too much in that. The demographics and breakdown of Lebanon are not my expertise. If I'm wrong about that, feel free to correct me. Israel pulling out the Joker strategies. Yeah. I don't think you can make batteries explode with that force or reliability. Yeah. Um, so here's one of the remains of one of these things. The remains of an exploded pager in Beirut's southern suburbs on Wednesday. So whenever you're looking at an explosive, um, there's, there's, there's sort of two things that you can find. If it's, Certain types of explosives that have um, delivery systems that are particularly robust, the delivery systems will usually be damaged, turned into shrapnel, 
and you can use the delivery system shrapnel to kind of put together what what happened, right? Um, if a lithium battery exploded, the few videos that I saw, the lithium battery is not sufficiently explosive enough to destroy itself. Um, lithium is the explosive compound, but a lithium battery is not, strictly speaking, a, a gigantic chunk of lithium. So whatever might burn away in, in the explosive event is is uh is not like it does not comprise the whole of it so if this is the pager this thing's gonna be completely annihilated um we have a big cord right here i'm gonna guess that this is i don't know what this might be that might be just part of the internals um inside of it charging port we've got all these pieces you can tell this is probably part of the screen frame here 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 um i don't see anything that looks like a split battery casing you know what i'm saying so in my mind how I'm going to expect that these happen, and we get a little bit of the breakdown from this. I'll actually read this too because it seems like people did some more uh, double checking. Israel says new era of wars beginning after devices exploded across Lebanon. Here's what to know. So this is just first off, this is just terrorism. This is this is uh, in this is literally just terrorism. This is just terrorism. That's what this is. And even if you hit majority, a majority, which is not a good, not a good quantity. A good quantity of, of, of target saturation is 100% of the people you were aiming for, right? And no additional people. We did not achieve that. As per usual, Israel was very indiscriminate with their bombing of civilian centers with booby-trapped devices. There, it was an indiscriminate bombing. Well, I discriminated somewhat. Yeah, but you didn't discriminate completely. So it was indiscriminate. <laughs> That's pretty much the case. Unless you were actively watching what you were blowing up, you weren't discriminating. You were assuming and hoping you were, you were like, maybe should be right. So a fairly indiscriminate bombing of a major civilian center. Uh, if you can't account for where all of the devices you sent out exploded because they were shipped throughout an entire country and all randomly exploded at once, then you and Harley Quinn from uh, a recent run of the Joker have the same strategy. <laughs> she put bombs in Game Boys or whatever. The <laughs> I guess well, she had a pretty high saturation of children, but she probably got some, you know, random, random, random uh, fellas playing some Switch in the mid afternoon. You know what I mean? So uh, this is just literally just you, you can't you have to prove that it's discriminant. You can't, you can't say, well, I'm pretty sure it was a discriminate attack. And then like, say like, well, how do you know? And you're like, well, I just kind of like figured what well, the reports we're hearing say that we mostly got the guys we were aiming for. Like, okay, so have you confirmed where all the devices went off? Like, did you have tracking on them to some degree? Do you know, are you sure? Like, cause you know, people walk out of the house with stuff or they go and take a nap in the middle of the day and maybe like their kid plays with something. How did you ensure that didn't happen? Like, oh, we didn't do that. We're scared for our civilians. Do you not care about Israeli lives? Like, what the f are you talking about? So this is a mass terror attack. I mean, it's kind of just straight up. Yeah, you got your guys. Uh, according to you, maybe. I don't f even know. I don't even know how many of them actually died. Um, these are wounding devices as well. They're booby traps. They're wounding devices. Uh, they don't have enough kick to kill in their immediate explosive radius i know from watching a few videos that i will not be seeing so these are not kill shot devices because they're undirected and they don't contain enough explosive power to immediately kill things in their vicinity so this is a wounding device as well which is also bad it's like a toe popper a toe popper mine same thing that the russians are using in ukraine the little in uh dragonfly toe popper mines it's the exact same yeah, it can kill people because they bleed to death, but it's not an immediate fatality. It's not like a an intentional fatal munition. Therefore, it's a wounding munition. Like, it could be fatal. Yeah, but it's not always when used correctly. And your correct use was kind of like sending them out to people. Like, do you even know where the guys are wearing their their pagers? Or just a, are you just assuming you're going to get ephemeral artery shot because they're in their pockets? Or like you're gonna, you're it, it's generally gonna hit people in the waist and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, what if the guy had it in his hand? It's gonna blow his hand off, but it's probably not gonna kill him. Like, if the death is incidental to the wound, it's a wounding device. You know what I mean? As opposed to like a bullet, 
which is like, yeah, you can get wounded by bullets probably more often than you get killed by them, but it's only because the person missed. <laughs> you know what I mean? If the bullet is used specifically how it was intended from plan to plan and you hit a critical spot, you go, that's night, night. Goodbye. You just took a five, five, six to the, uh, to, to the brainstem. It's good night. Thank you for playing. I hope that your reincarnation goes well. Uh, a random f pager or walkie talkie just gets sent out with people and it can explode in anywhere is insane to me. Um, people are like, oh yeah, no one saw it coming. Yeah. Cause the f massive violation of international norms and standards is like, it's, it's psychotic. It is a f psychotic technique. I, I just literally, I, I'm, I've was, I've been, I've been gobsmacked about it for days. I'm just totally thrown. Like we've entered a new war era of warfare. No, you haven't. You're, you're, you're just terrorists now. <laughs> God damn. Oh. Did you drone in all your bombs, Tyler? No, I was a machine gunner. I shot machine guns at people. And actually, the one time I dropped a bomb on a guy, I held a laser on him. Me. Literally, I looked at the guy. I looked at the guy. And I held a laser on him until he died from a bomb coming out of a plane. You didn't think I could answer that question, did you? Killed a guy like that. <laughs> what? Okay, sorry. I love you. No talking about the war. It's entirely possible it was just a blasting cap. So terrorism is any act of asymmetrical warfare. How did you get that? Are you stupid? Who said that? Why are you saying that? No, terrorism is any act of indiscriminate warfare. <laughs> indiscriminate warfare uh, or, or indiscriminate violence perpetrated in order to cause terror and mayhem in a civilian population, which is where all of those guys were when the pagers started going off. <laughs> like, literally. The IDF is a terrorist group, and I'm tired of pretending they're not. Yeah, yeah, like, it's just state-sponsored terrorism. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not hating. We're not going to, this isn't, I'm not going to get into the morality of it, all right? If you want to do that, it's fine. Just don't try to kid me about it. You know what I mean? I'm not here. I, like, if there's any Israelis in the audience, by the way, I know you can't help yourself, but, like, you're going to do the thing. You're going to do the thing. But, I, but uh, America in the Iraq war did a bad thing. Didn't you guys do a genocide of the Native Americans? Yes and yes. There you go. So that argument's done. I'm going to teach you guys how to do warfare right. Because you're Israelis and you don't know any better. You dumb as They're like, like literally you exist at our pleasure. So, so when an American starts talking to an Israeli about warfare, sit down on your hands, shut the fuck up and listen. Because you're being spoken down to. You're being, you're being condescended to as a country and as a people. <laughs> Understand that. What's your opinion on the Dah Dahia doctrine? I don't give a f about whatever that is. Don't give a. Sh I'm not talking about any goofy. F I'm not talking about any of your 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 weird little f internal politics. I don't give a f about them. I don't care about any of like Israel's uh, absurd justifications for stuff and their morality and some asshole. Uh, fucking talking about 1967 and, and 2008 and 1982 and 1876. I don't give a about that. I'm just talking about specifically the functionality of Israeli warfare and tactics, which are dog ass, ass boogers, embarrassing. You're a humiliation to the West as a people, like legitimately, I have no respect for the IDF as a fighting force or as a, as a, as a collective unit of people that are meant to like defend a territory because you can't do it on your own. First and foremost, like just understand that I, I need to, I need to establish this. You can't do it on your own. You exist at our pleasure. You exist at my pleasure as an American taxpayer. There is no bravery. There's no courage. There's no camaraderie. There's no capability. There's no daring do you literally exist because me and my fellow countrymen pay our taxes and we afford you the ability to continue living. And that's it. 
That's, 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 the, that's the entire existence of Israel summed up. I pay my taxes as an American, and a lot of other Americans do, and then you guys get to survive another year because you're so f- bad at warfare. Um, and, and more to the point, politics, and more to the point, not pissing off all of your neighbors by constantly pissing your pants and doing dumb f- like this. Uh, you deserve to be hated. <laughs> I can't hammer that home enough. Anybody that f- hates Israel on earth is like somehow is just insanely more justified in the, dis- the, the disgust they feel towards your country is an operative thing, not the people in it. Then hatred of almost any other country on earth than Russia, or maybe us in some cases, but like, God damn. Uh, understand, if you're Israeli, I have no f- respect whatsoever for your motivations. I don't care. I don't care about your country's history. It means nothing to me because I've paid my taxes. And so I don't care. You are, you're, you're, your existence is like a, 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 a f- issue that Americans have to talk through as we discuss whether or not we're going to continue footing the bill for you to exist another year, five or so years in the future. So just understand your position when you're ever talking to me. Know that it's very diminished and I have no respect for you. I, I, I swear to God, understand that. <laughs> Ask me about, do you know about and this, that, and the other 70? I don't give a f- I'm talking about a specific operation and whether it has any military efficacy. The answer is, spoiler, no. Uh, they're just emotional. I'm not emotional at all. <laughs> I don't give a. F- Do you know what I would feel if, if if we just stopped funding Israel tomorrow and like you guys got off the map? I wouldn't care. If we started quadruple funding you guys tomorrow and you actually finally finished your mass slaughter of the Palestinians, I wouldn't care. I don't have a I don't have a real dog in this fight. I'm just very upset by the constant lies. And the, 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 the justifications for barbarism that both sides for some reason continuously engage in and then just lose track of their entire convert, lose track of any sense of like how to end this thing just so that you guys can piss and, and fart at each other over six square feet of gravel because your dad robbed someone else's dad in the 19th. I don't care. I have no respect for it. I, I refuse to. I find the death of children disgusting. And you are all contributing to it equally in my eyes. I, I don't care about your countries. I don't respect them. I, I don't give a f- about their continued existence. But because I know a little bit about military tactics, and, and for some reason I'm the only person a quarter inch to the left that seems to have ever looked up any of the law of land warfare f- documents or has any understanding of how military operations are supposed to f- work, and I'm not even a f- genius on the matter, I'm going to comment on it. And that's pretty much it. And if you're an Israeli, you're going to sit down, shut the f- up, and take it. Because an American is speaking, know your place, sit down on your f- hands, and listen. So you can actually fight a war successfully for maybe once in your f- lives. <laughs> God damn it. Pet country. Literally, you are a pet. You are a pet country. With way, way too, ne- too many needs. Israel is a 18-year-old rat dog. Shivering, shaking, half of its fur is gone. It's blind in two eyes. Sprinting at children to bite them on the face. Only held back by a leash that is sometimes long and sometimes short. Depending on how sociopathic our current administration is. And that's it. That's it. I don't consider you guys allies. As an American former member of the military, I think that you're dog friends. I think you start and then we have to clean it up for you. And we have to pay more money because you can't stop start starting. You're, you're bedwetting pants dogs that we have to pay the vet bill for every goddamn year. And I'm sick of it. And you're really on a timer. Understand that. It's really starting to kick off because when my generation starts taking over, you guys are going to be on a limit. There's going to be a limit to how much more money you're going to get. And it's going to run out. So you better learn how to do diplomacy real soon. Because I would not be surprised if in 10 or 15 years, that well runs dry. I hope it does earlier. If it was up to me, I would tell you assholes, you have exactly five years to figure out a two-state solution or ending the Patriot missiles. That's it. I don't give a what it is. I don't care how hard it is or what you have to sacrifice or lose. Just you get no more missiles in five years. That's it. That's what I want to see. 
people don't, I don't give a, they're not my people. They're not my, your Israel's Israelis are not my people. Neither are the Palestinians. And I'm, I'm really quite sick of my country paying for you to continue this charade of a war you have that is just you murdering people. It is pathetic and it's disgusting. And I despise your country as a whole for engaging in it. I don't care that much about your people. I like Jewish people. I think they're pretty based in general. But people that are highly supportive of the state of Israel, regardless of what's going on, okay, fine, do that. I don't care. M morally, I'm unconcerned. However, I want to, I want to rip up the next check, like as soon as, as soon as it can happen, and then see what you see, see if you can just start all of a sudden becoming much more diplomatic to the people in the region. If we stop giving you the ability to kill them incessantly on our tab, you useless. God damn. Oh, had to get that off my chest. God damn it. I cannot stand an Israeli that talks back. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about the country, pe the people in the country. I don't give a sh anything else. Just this, the, 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 the countrymen of Israel talking, talking, talking. God damn it. So irritating. Anyway. <sighs> Israel says its war focus is moving north. I haven't finished what's going on in there. Okay, we got to move into Lebanon now. Tacitly acknowledging its role in shock twin attacks in Hezbollah, in which pagers and walkie-talkies used, exploded across Lebanon on consecutive days. Lebanon's foreign minister, Abdallah Bou Habib, told CNN he fears that the attacks signal a move to an introduction to war. It's a scary moment. We are afraid of coming to war because we don't want a war, said the foreign minister, who blamed Israel for the attacks. It's legitimately an act of war. <laughs> Oh, my God. At least 20 people were killed and more than 450 were wounded after dozens of walkie-talkies blew up in Lebanon on Wednesday, a day after blasts targeted the pagers of Hezbollah members, a dozen people. Hezbollah, a dozen people wounded thousands. Uh, Hezbollah said 16 members were killed Wednesday, but it didn't elaborate on the circumstances. So, um, you know... What, what, I've heard it's like hundreds or thousands of pagers. I don't know exactly the quantity of it, but these seem like way too high injury ratings for a discerning attack. Little, little high, little high. Uh, what should we do when people are hiding among civilians? Uh, literally just read the goddamn coin tell. Just, just, just read the counterinsurgency manual. That's it. Start by reading a counterinsurgency manual written by a real country and then stop doing whatever comes to your mind is the Israeli military. Just literally. Fight. You want to start fighting Hezbollah on its, uh, in a way that'll win? Fire everybody who has ever made a decision in the Israeli army for the last 20 years. Fire them out of a cannon into the Mediterranean. That's how you start uh, actually combating Hezbollah. God damn <laughs> How did you how did you reduce the overall forces that were attacking you? I wounded 450 civilians who are going to be really chill about this in the morning. They're going to be very forgiving about it. <laughs> you don't know how many people you killed? Oh, we have no fucking idea. We can't even lie to you about the number because we're Israel and we just killed anyone that got in our way of killing some nobody Hezbollah guy. Who can be instantaneously replaced by another guy. <laughs> Just some asshole shopping for mangoes. God damn it. Discontinued models. Lebanon's communications ministry said the walkie-talkie devices that exploded were a discontinued model made by the Japanese firm ICOM. The IC V82 radios were not supplied by a recognized agent, were not officially licensed, and had not been vetted by the security services. The ministry said. The firm said that the model was discontinued a decade ago and it could not determine whether they were counterfeit or shipped from its company. Probably counterfeit. I'm going to get into how I think this was done in a second. We might find out. We might not. Um, actually, actually, but we'll look into it. New era of war. Israel, which refused to comment on the explosions, was behind the attacks. CNN has learned. Israel's defense minister said a new era of war was beginning, which is a terror campaign. The center of gravity is moving north. Why now? Israel launched pager attacks after it believed the plan had been discovered by Hezbollah, according to an Israeli security source. So the second someone found out about it, they panicked and hit the button and blew up all the pagers 
no matter where they were. Apparently, for one thing I know is that all the pagers went off at once, which suggests either one mass detonation signal or a timer. Only one of those two things. If it was they could figure out that they had to move the plan ahead, uh, then it was one mass detonation signal that went out across a series of people. FD Sigfire, I saw Lunar Box's tweet about this, and you went off on him. I'm blown away that he defended that, even for him. I, I don't. He's like show. I'll get into. I'll, I'm going to get into it because he covered me on his stream. But it's so f stupid, a and I don't know why they're defending. It, it doesn't help. We'll get okay. Let me. I'll explain this real quick. Let me explain this real quick. Arguing about whether or not something is a war crime is completely pointless. The vibe alone that something was a war crime should be sufficient to uh, basically interdict any future action that is taken in that direction. The, the, the suspicion alone of any act of a war crime should be enough for the international community to condemn, limit, and possibly by force end the actions of any individual state. It really should. Uh, particularly uh, when when the the war crime is of such an egregious nature that thousands of people are injured within a day, uh, and you can't tell who was injured. Is that's the that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, there's always a possibility of mistakes in warfare. That's true collateral damage. You f***ed up. Even in that case, you have to make reparations. You have to make good on things uh, because first off, it's the the right thing to do and second off for the main reason that war crimes are war crimes it is not because of an ethical consideration on the part of people that are fighting it really isn't that can go into it and it should be what really motivates people but it's not the real motivation to avoid committing war crimes or engaging in anything that could be considered a war crime is because war crimes are war crimes because they are ineffective tactics that do not lead to the successful resolution of warfare they don't they don't. They, they are always the inferior version of an actual tactic, usually engaged in out of cowardice or a desire to harm instead of uh, defeat an enemy. That's why wounding munitions are bad. A wounding munition is a waste of ammo. Frangible munitions, things that go inside you and explode, right? It's a waste to make a more expensive bullet that just does a smaller amount of harm when you can get two good bullets for the price of one and then shoot better. Right. Um, that that's sort of the point of it. So even from an amoral standpoint, anybody engaging in crimes of war, right, are people that are not concerned with ending war. That's which is the case with the IDF the entire time. They are clearly unconcerned with mitigating the overall harm of war or bringing it to a swift resolution in a way that will actually keep the war over for a while killing high level leaders in a war, right? People that could actually organize a surrender or organize peace is a war crime. A lot of the time. All right. There's exceptions for it in certain cases, but particularly if they're the individuals that are going to engage in negotiation or are in control of all of the people underneath them. And like those people will all scatter. It's kind of pointless. A lot of the times to just randomly kill a high level person. Um, really high, you know, obviously mid-level officers, field grade officers in whatever variant, if you're talking about cellular warfare is fine, but this is cellular warfare anyway. So eliminating a, a, a mid or high level individual doesn't do anything. I swear to God, you're going to, I'm going to blow your mind. Osama bin Laden died in 2010 and Al Qaeda is still around. I know that's insanity, right? It's nuts. What? Holy. Yeah. He died and terrorism didn't end. What? The same group still around? Yes, because it's how terrorists know you're going to try to kill high-ranking terrorists. They've accounted for this in their strategy. So there's just other people that can go up and everyone understands the mission so they can continue on with it. Counterinsurgency doesn't have anything to do with nine times out of ten fighting. Fighting is just always done the same way basically every time. Counterinsurgency is hearts and minds, baby. Hearts and minds. Making the people who are around terrorists so afraid of or disgusted by the terrorists actions and so well understanding that the terrorists are not going to help them and having them around is bad that they naturally exclude them from society and do not swell their ranks with immediate support. You, you never end a terror cell. You really don't. 
You just make them negligible. Or sometimes you have to like let them rejoin society. Shout out Ireland. You don't believe me until I said that, right? You have to let the terror cell legitimize, become an actual political organization that won't permit terrorism within its own ranks anymore because it's not effective at achieving their goals. And then, then that's another thing. Compromise is going to be the only way to get ahead of this thing. The only reason that Israel hasn't been forced to compromise in any direction yet is because we keep arming them. <laughs> Wait, they're, they're literally getting loaned military might by the strongest military on earth constantly for decades, and it precludes them having to go and sit at the negotiation table. And it permits them to engage in like this that every other country around them would get involved with and like them up over more than likely if you go anywhere else in the world you know what i mean this would be like dude do we have to go to war with this other balkan nation because they terror attacked third balkan nation and they're our friends you know what i mean like treaties and stuff so all that you can't even negotiate treaties or anything based on like mutually assured destruction because the mutually assured destruction is not mutually assured because you guys will have to deal with america possibly flying a stealth nuclear bomber over you you know what i mean it's this is the issue this is the the problem i have with loner box specifically um and and to a similar extent destiny who i don't know which one of them is repeating the other one's talking points getting into the nitty-gritty of who gives a about the morality of the situation i don't give it i don't give a what happened two days ago the 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 conflict ends by the action you take the immediate moment you want to actually actually end the conflict and move forward from that that's that's it what do you mean they're gonna have to forgive each other yup sorry but he killed my blub and stole my blub sorry we can figure that out at the negotiation table we can we can organize visiting you know what i mean and 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 and, and repopulation and repatriation of peoples these are like hard terms but we never even get into this there's just this thought of an eternal cycle of revenge and, and, and blood debt that must be paid again and again and again between these uh, multiple sort of countries in the area, but particularly just between Israel and everyone else, to the point that they treat any uh, mild uh, hesitation towards support of their methods as some sort of act of overt anti-Semitism. It's like, I don't give a who you are. I don't care. I don't care. I just don't like, I don't give a your country. I wish we could stop spending money on it. I don't know what the real overall value is. I kind of want to negotiate with the Palestines. Let's let Palestine run Israel for a while. See if they give us a better deal. That's fine. That's American. That's capitalist. I don't know what the kind of shit on right now. It's the most, it's the most un-American thing that we are doing period is, is paying for this loser goddamn country to exist that I don't think fucking benefits us in the long run at all. They just, all they do is humiliate us and use our fucking money to kill people like children. I think that's stupid as I don't give a f what they went through. I don't care. It's not my country. I don't give a f seven day war. I don't give a shit. It was eight days. What if it was four? I don't give a f about your history. I don't care about you at all. I want to cut the goddamn umbilical cord. I don't like having a dog friend. You know who I love? Canada. Canada's great. Canada fucks up all the time. But Canadians are out here trying to fight other Canadians over like making things good with the first peoples of Canada. You know, those are conversations that are happening in Canada. Canada is not like trying to take over a little chunk of Russia and murder everybody that's in it. I like Me Mexico's got a ton of little problems, but Mexico's not like, you know, randomly invading, like floating across the water and then just slaughtering Haitians in the Gulf. Wait, wait, wait. All, all of our other friends, even the ones that we're not that close to are somehow doing better than Israel. It's insane. It's insane how bad friends you are. That's like really the thing. I, I just don't want to, I don't want to continue that relationship. That's me personally. I don't care. You can't make an argument. I don't give a shit who lives or dies. I don't care. It's not about me. I don't live there. I don't live there, but I'm paying for it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Was Tyler molested? What the fuck? <laughs> Shout out to Israelis molding in chat. I think this man, uh, we are do Borat. I think this man was molested. <laughs> go ahead and ban him for that. Mods, if you're around, go ahead and ban him for that. 
That's a yucky, yucky, yuck quote. What the fuck are you saying? FDs, would you, did I respond to FD even? I don't know. But like, this is this is my ultimate issue with this entire thing. <laughs> what does this accomplish? It, and I feel like I feel like I'm owed an answer, and I won't get it because I can't FOIA Israel, and I should be able to because they owe me a explanation. They my, they owe my entire country an explanation, considering they're our like fourth our fourth branch of government for some reason. Canada did some cringe in terms of trying to cover up First Nation atrocities, but they did better than the U.S. Yeah, I mean, like, god damn, to some degree, our countries are actually being held to account. And it just, on the other side of things, it's just not happening. It just really, it's just not happening at all. And, and the amount of authority that they wield in that region is so outsized to the size of the nation and its productivity that it's, it's psychotic. It, it, and it, it, it actually is legitimately irritating to me as an American just like literally, I just find it irritating. That's like, that's all you get from me. Okay. So let's see. This is the um, stuff. Yeah. People in Lebanon fear everyday devices following twin attacks. Middle East journalist tells CNN. This is the other issue. So um, Israel's selfish actions in Lebanon uh, doing Harley Quinn naturally is going to extrapolate out to people being afraid of all the devices that exist. Everybody that bought a new thing or that bought a walkie-talkie is going to be throwing it away. You're going to have a massive supply chain issue. I don't know if Lebanon's actually going to try to start double-checking any new electronics that are coming into the country from Japan now. If <laughs> those were Japanese, um, but you're you're going to cause terror on the ground. The people are terrified. That's terrorism. It's sufficient. It's sufficient. You've terrified the civilian populace of Lebanon with your irresponsible and violent actions. In order to achieve a political end, that's terrorism. I don't. I don't need a more complicated definition. I don't need to get into some Harvard scholar's ability. Oh, look! All these people are terrified of dying because of your goofy, your goofy Harley Quinn esque goddamn escapade that you did. You're a terrorist. You're a terrorist nation. If the nation did it, you're a terrorist nation. This is how it works. America's a terrorist nation too, for the same reason. Sometimes, got to get over it. I don't think we should be drone bombing anybody. I, I think I think that's a losing a losing bet. And if you can't explain to me why, because it's all secret, I say stop doing it. And let me see what bad thing happens. How about that? How about that? God damn! It's right in front of you. What explanation ex explanation do you need? It was mission accomplished. What mission? Like what does it accomplish? You just wanted to murder some people. Why? What does it do? That's the point. You can't just kill people randomly because they're on the other side with no goals in mind, especially when they're not engaged in active combat with you. Do you know what I mean? Like what, what does it, what does it do? And especially with the risk of it, like you killed like what? 24 people. You terrified a nation to kill 24 people and f***ed up probably the entire electronics trade there. You killed a bunch of innocent people too. And now what? What do you what do you think Hezbollah went away? D is Hezbollah slowing down? Was Hezbollah going to do something that setting off cell phone bombs or pager bombs was going to stop? What ha what did you do? You just wanted to murder people? That's f psychotic. <laughs> it's just were you just bloodthirsty f sociopaths? Like what 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 does it do? <laughs> what did, what does it do? Literally that's the point. What what did you stop? You killed 24 people. And now you've probably got 25 times that amount of people stoked to try to kill you assholes back because you blew their kid up when he was shopping for mangoes or whatever the f I don't know why I keep bringing up mangoes. Like, yeah, Israel, truly the school shooter of countries, literally. Liter I've never heard it better. Israel can be summed up. Their entire foreign policy can be summed up in the phrase, don't go to market tomorrow, you're cool. God damn. Oh. They have phones, Tyler. Civvies weren't using pagers. The they blew the pagers up 
in uncontrolled areas where civilians were and civilians were harmed anyway. That all, every Hezbollah guy didn't go pick up a pager and then sit down in a concrete room isolated from the world to blow the pager up, you idiot. They were out with people. It's a bomb. It goes out in every direction. It goes out. It's an explosive, you idiot. <laughs> what the f Average Israeli supporter. I can't f take you people. It's a f bomb, you moron. It goes away from the guy, too. If he's near someone else, it goes into them. If someone else picks it up, it hits them. If he leaves it somewhere, maybe it blows up and doesn't hit anybody. The thing is, you don't fucking know because it's an indiscriminate munition. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's psychotic. It's terrorism. You just did terrorism. You guys are terrorists. Israelis are terrorists. So is, I guess, everybody else. We'll I'll give you that. You're terrorists killing terrorists at best, you fucking animals. What the fuck? Are you out of your mind? Like, god damn it. Also, wounding munitions. Like, what? Is it one guy got cracked in the leg by a bad pager. He's like, oh, I'm going to give up on terrorism now. <laughs> you didn't accomplish it, you idiots. You just made all of Lebanon ready to go to war with Israel, which is probably the actual thing. Israel's going to want us to help them and park another goddamn boat off the ocean so we can hold you hands through another goddamn invasion. Mother dude. You lose Marines in a bombing to assist Israel, the worst friend in the history of mankind, as they do idiotic Batman villain dumb dog tactics. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. You should have never helped y'all. You should have never helped any of you. you should just leave it. It should have been like, oh, Munich happened, and we should have been like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give you like five or six people, and then you're on your own from here. <laughs> you guys are on your... As a matter of fact, Germany, if you're upset about it, you go help them. You go help them. I, I'm, I'm done. Or you're sick of it. Sick of it. We should have been sick of it when the Berlin Wall came down. Should have been sick of it before that. And he killed the son of a member of the Lebanese parliament. <laughs> The bombs worked by sending out an error that had to be cleared with a button press. But who pre who pressed it? Who pressed it? You know what I mean? Like that that's the thing. And were they outside? That's not that's not that's still not the tech check who pressed the button. <laughs> that's even that's a landmine. Yeah, we already have those. Those are landmines. It's a thing, it's a bomb where if you press a button it explodes. We have those. They're called landmines or booby traps. <laughs> Israelis thinking they're clever as by reinventing cluster munitions via V reading a few Batman comics. It's absurd. Pictures only used by Hezbollah Command for coordinates. They were geared towards broadband reception, so low data. And none of that addresses any of the concerns. I, I don't give a f How do they know actually the person had it? That's the point. Does it have a camera on it? Were they watching the guy? No. So you have a thing that says press button to fix error anywhere in the country at any given time. Anywhere. It's anywhere. You have a thing that says press button to fix error. And if you press the button to fix the error, it explodes. Wait, wait, how, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> does it, does it wait for you to not be in a crowded marketplace? Does it wait for you to not be next to your child? If you have a kid, does it wait for you to be outside of a hospital? Does it wait for you to be outside of an area where if an explosion happens, it could cause a knock-on effect into other explosions that hurt more people? You know, what if one of these guys is a welder part-time when he's done and fucking blew up the entire acetylene tank at a fucking welding factory, ironworks or whatever, and, and, and killed like five or 600 people because you did like, no, no, we had it figured out. We, what we did was say, press this button to fix air and it explodes. That's what, that's not better. It's, it's literally just not better. <laughs> that's, it's a landmine that calls to you. <laughs> like, what the f is that? <laughs> what we've invented is a, is a, is a landmine that attracts people to it. Okay. Congratulations. You revolutionized the worst aspect of warfare. What happened to all the ones that didn't blow up? Are they still out there? <laughs> What in the absolute 
bro. Like, Jesus Christ. No, not, we're not doing VC. I'm not talking to this idiot at all. <laughs> I got too much to cover. Call in on, like, Monday, okay? I'll make time for you Monday. I got too much to cover. I, I don't... I. I don't think you're going to say literally anything that could change my mind on this because you're not, I, I just, I've read your, you're not addressing any of the main topics. Landmines or war crimes in certain cases. Yes. Um, especially certain types of war, uh, certain types of cluster mines, especially you can put mines down. You have to can tell everybody where it is. If you do like cluster mines and that go everywhere and it takes demining operations for it. Like, and, and basically you mine an area that, any any civilian could walk in. It, it doesn't have like a military ability. It's just filling an area with explosives, kind of wantonly. Yeah, that's a war crime. <laughs> it's bad to do. Russia's doing it right now with their little toe popper grenades, wounding munitions. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's get back to this. Israel's remote controlled bombing of thousands of pages held by members of the terrorist group Hezbollah across Lebanon. I mean, you got to prove that. You got to prove it. You got to prove it indefinitely. Otherwise, it's indiscriminate. You got to prove that you only gave it to them. <laughs> I like I like that the whole like we're certain everyone got one. And then like if you've been an adult for more than five minutes in your life and known people like, oh, yeah, I got two extra pagers. You want one? I got these off a boat. And you're like, yeah, every Hezbollah guy has to be like completely dedicated to doing only cool Hezbollah shit, you know? No, no, no accounting whatsoever for any, any alteration to it. I read a girl was killed, but it wasn't clear what age. The fact that you don't know means it's indiscriminate. That's the point. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing when Russia bombs a hospital and you're like, who did they kill? We have no idea. There could have been some soldiers in there, but we don't know because they just indiscriminately bombed the hospital. When you just indiscriminately bomb the population of Lebanon by sending pagers ostensibly to random terrorists and then blowing them up whenever you feel like it, that <laughs> that's indiscriminate because anybody can pick the pager up. Oh, honey, look, your pager. You know what I mean? It's like, it's legitimately like the opening scene of a f***ing, like, of a, of a, of a, the third, the Batman movie is going to be this. This is going to be the opening scene of the third, the Batman movie. That bomb was meant for me. Hezbollah Dan, whose wife picked up, or kid picked up the f***ing pager and pressed the button and died instead. I'm sure Hezbollah Dan's going to be real f***ing chill after this. Good job. He's not going to be f***ing, he's not going to be out there. Hey, everybody, you should kill this out of Israelis because uh, I'm butthurt about it. God damn, children were killed and injured. Of course they were. You can't prove they weren't because you don't know who got hit. <laughs> You're just assuming. Which flavor? Haritos? It's strawberry today. My god damn. This would be the opening to MGS6. Yeah. Beepers that kill... Let's see. First, a few misapprehensions should be cleared away. This was not, as some have charged, a mass killing or a terrorist attack. Yeah, it was. I proved that. In many ways, it was the opposite. Okay, so we got we got some hospital. It is hard to imagine a more discreetly targeted attack, i.e. one aimed at just the objects of the assault, minimizing the chances of harming anybody else. No, it's not. Snipers. That's always better. A guy, a guy who looks through a scope at someone's face and then puts a bullet through it. That's probably one of the best ways to assassinate someone ever. See also John Fitzgerald Kennedy. <laughs> what are you talking about? <sighs> oh, nor was it a cyber attack. Ooh, I like that shirt. That's very cute. Buck. <laughs> Bye. That is, nobody digitally hacked into a certain brand of pager widely used by ordinary customers. Rather, specific batches of pagers which had been ordered by Hezbollah were intercepted somewhere between the manufacturer and their destination in Lebanon. Technical teams, probably run by Israeli intelligence, then opened the pagers and inserted small explosive devices which could be triggered remotely. Members of Hezbollah had ordered the pagers for their personnel after realizing that the GPS tracking on their cell phones made it easier for Israel to determine the group's locations. So, 
now that you can't determine it's me and where I am, just bombs anywhere. The hit explosives are very small, three grams, about a tenth of an ounce, uh, minimizing the chances of in- minimizing the chances of injuring anyone except the people carrying the pagers. It's a wounding round. It's a wounding a wounding device. That's awesome. Initial reports said nine people were killed. Hezbollah spokesman said that six of those people were Hezbollah fighters, meaning that simultaneous explosions killed just three civilians. <laughs> Oh, the Israeli version of success is awesome. Borat voice, uh, 66%. I am very good. <laughs> I have a very good idea of how to kill them. 66% was fighter. Only 33% not fighter. <laughs> it was a very good attack. It was a very smart, we sent out pagers. We sent out pagers, they thought they, no one would ever indiscriminately bomb me with a pager, and they didn't know that we would, we would indiscriminately bomb. Was there? 33% of the casualties were civilian. That happens, it happens. <laughs> Israeli confidence at its finest. I swear to God, you people. I swear to God, you people. 66% this guy's on your side He's he's on your side What's your collateral damage rate? 33% minimum fatalities? Are you serious? Bro. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> Steal the moon. Hezbollah spokesman said that six of those were Hezbollah fighters, risen to 12. It's not clear how many of those were fighters. The death toll is since risen to 12, but it's not clear how many of those were fighters. Because it's indiscriminate. Because you don't know who you killed. That's the point. You have no f- <laughs> you gotta wait for the crying family members to tell you whether or not the people were f- Hezbollah. <laughs> Shout out the f- bedraggled, f- uh, sweaty f- running the goddamn operation for this. Just like, well, tell them uh, the ten-year-old girl was probably she was probably Hamas. <laughs> Oh man, Israel's just out there like women and children, f- homie. F- we ball. <laughs> God damn. God damn. <laughs> this was a highly accurate and discriminating attack. We got a 33% only civilian <laughs> and a 66% fighter. Very good. <laughs> Very nice, the chat. God damn it. About 2,800 people are said to be injured. And it does not know how many of those are Hezbollah or how serious the injuries are. Two of those kids are said to be children. 2,800 people. <laughs> Twenty eight hundred people. Average Israeli. F- average. Average. Understand. Israelis are so bad at warfare. Average Israeli success rate. Twenty eight hundred. I have an idea. What we will do is get a pager and put bombs inside of it. Then we will send to Lebanon, blow up, and kill only the person who we send it to. <laughs> Twenty eight hundred people are injured. I like I do shout out any Israelis that are gonna watch this or or, or pro Zion pro Zion people in America who are gonna watch this and then say uh, well how bad were the injuries as though like you blowing out some poor f- eardrums because he was in a, like a garage when it went off is like oh this f- like somebody's got somebody lost a finger 
somebody's got shrapnel in their forehead that didn't kill them, but they got a gigantic chunk of beeper screen in their forehead. Fire f- those people, all right? It's not dead. You're lucky you're not dead. <laughs> Honestly, that's how, that's how the Israelis will react. And what do is an Israeli f- counter terror operation. All 2,800 of you are literally fortunate you're not already dead. Don't worry. We will invade as soon as we can, and we will literally never aim a f- bomb. We will not aim. F- I hope you're all used to getting shot when you try to get f- sugar off a food convoy. Average, average f- Israeli success rate. What a, f- what a, if you're not humiliated, you can't be saved. If you are f- pro Israel and you're not f- humiliated by this, you cannot be saved. This is the. IDF, proud fighting force of Israel. We are, we are make this uh, defense of the people. (laughs) Oh my God. There's one going off in the pocket of someone at the store next to several people. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Go see who the knows where the people were. You weren't paying attention. They're in in Lebanon. They're probably in Beirut. One of the most crowded cities on earth. <laughs> oh my god. It's like the cop who shot an acorn, but instead of a pistol, he used TNT. Yeah, he used a f- grenade launcher. Tyler, remember the blast waves kill you easier than shrapnel. These went off in a room. Everyone in the room likely had their ears and eyes damaged. Yeah, 100%. People don't understand this, by the way, too. It's not like a video game where like there's splash damage and it's in a limited area and you're like, you're fine. If you're in a f-ing room, all of the air in the room pressurizes. You ever know how like sometimes somebody will shut a door in a room that you're in that's closed and your ears will pop. You're like, ah, what the f-? or you'll open a door, right? Or a window. And like, you'll like your, you'll feel like your sinus is empty or something, or your, your ears will start hearing way better. It's because the air pressure in the room changed. You know what changes the air pressure in the room really significantly? A f- bomb. A bomb is a solid that turns into a load of gas all at once. And then it fills the space until the gas depressurizes somehow by blowing apart what it's inside of, or sometimes just hyper filling the area and turning it into several hundred atmospheres of pressure, which will liquefy parts of the inside of you. Oh man. Shout out to anybody who was fucking like, Oh, Hey, uh, how about it? How about it's the thing that's the most, uh, it'll make your eyes look at it. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, look, my, uh, my beeper has, my beeper has an error or honey. Look, your beeper has an error. Oh, okay. Are you going to fix it? <laughs> it gets you right in the eyes. What we wanted to do is make sure people looked directly at the mine. We wanted people, anyone who was mildly interested in someone saying, oh, I'm going to fix this error on my page. You have a pager? Really? Can I see it? Yeah. Look, here's my pager. We had to just do boop. Everybody's eyes are gone israelis are off the chain dude i can't believe dude if you're a pro zionist person defending this you are such a cuck dude i swear to god imagine imagine being like i'm proud of my military (laughs) oh my god tyler you sound like Gru. i'll take it i'll take it we are going to steal the moon Oh my god. So let's go over some of this stuff real quick. Let's go over some of this. So, okay, here. Here we go. This is the protocol on prohibitions or restrictions on the use of mines or booby traps. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and do something that people don't tend to do here. This article applies to this is uh, this is UN treaties, uh, DAX treaty, uh, UN special provision on this stuff. I got to go up to the top and read the whole thing. Yeah. So this is the protocol on prohibitions or restrictions on the use of mines, booby traps, or other devices as amended on 3rd May, 1996. Protocol two is amended on 3rd May, 1996 annexed to the convention on prohibitions or restrictions on the use of certain conventional weapons, which may be deemed excessively injurious or to have indiscriminate effects. Geneva convention. Thank you. 3rd May, 1996. When I said I couldn't remember the title, it's because this is the title. Okay. It's a little long. That's the Chinese part so that everybody can read it. We'll go down a little bit just so I can 
Specifications on self-destruction and self-deactivation. All remotely delivered anti-personnel mines shall be designed and constructed so that no more than 10% of activated mines will fail to self-destruct in 30 days after emplacement. This is the other issue. Because this is mining, essentially. Mining or booby trapping is like, are those bombs still out there waiting to go off? Or did they just go off automatically? That's the other thing with mines, by the way. Uh, mines are not supposed to stay indefinitely. The Russian ones do. The Russian mines have to be... Um, they have to be individually demined in an area. So an area where no one stepped on the mines and doesn't know about them and they're just in the ground, you know, getting rained on, covered up in dirt, they stay active for maybe decades. The same thing with these pagers. Um, either, so th that's the other issue. So the pager is out in the world now because not everybody blew them up. What's happening with the pager, right? What's happening with the pager? Did the guy have two of them and not give them to the rest of his captains right he like five or six got a desk full of them in a desk somewhere and he's the guy that died so he's got a desk full of pagers you don't know this because nobody knows this so you can make up anything you want because the israelis don't know what the happened to all the bombs they sent out into the world they basically did the joker level of a cluster mine uh cluster mining of a territory so if somebody has a desk full of these things right because he didn't give them all out what happened to him in the real world when you mine an area you mark it. You tell everybody that's going to be mined. We just don't want you walking across it. The mines are supposed to explode on their own out in the open in a minefield. You can also clear them because it's a minefield. You know where all the mines are. They're in the minefield. You put a big apers unit right there, right? They're not apers. Uh, I can't remember how to say that thing. The backpack that shoots the debt cord. If you know, you know. Blow up all the mines through sympathetic detonation. How do you do sympathetic detonation of random bombs you put into a civilian center? How do you do that? Do they blow up on their own or do they just sit there until someone finds it? Where are they? You don't know. You don't know where the bombs are, Israel, because you just let them go. Who the f knows where the f bombs are now? Where are they? Who can answer where the bombs are now oh my god i know you don't know because i know if you tell me you don't know how many civilians died i know you don't know where the explosion this there's one guy that's like i think we can account for how many how many they don't want to tell because they want those things to remain in play because if anyone gets fucking killed by it, it's going to be a lebanese person christian muslim doesn't matter Blah. they don't give up bro Oh my god. One word, Laos. Is Laos still heavily mined? Are they still doing demining? Is that where the f mine rats are? If you guys want to look up something cool, I'm not going to do it now. Anti mine rats are very cool. They do not blow up, they smell the mines and get cheese. They're, they're cool. It's, it's nice. Uh, all non remotely delivered anti personnel mines used outside marked areas as defined in this protocol shall comply with the requirements for self destruction and self deactivation sedated in subparagraph A. So we're going to go through the rest of this stuff. You guys can look this up. This is the Geneva Conventions, which I know, Israelis, don't worry. <laughs> I know you're not going to look at this. <laughs> International signs for minefields and mined areas. Signs similar to the example attached and specified below shall be utilized in the marking of minefields and mined areas to ensure their visibility and recognition by the civil, civilian population. Watch out for pagers, homie. Pagers in now walkie-talkies. Who the knows what else will explode if you see any old electronics whatsoever it might be a bomb also it's israelis so maybe the new electronics are bombs too israelis please hit the trifecta you monsters and start blowing up cell phones just modern cell phones some samsung g20s <laughs> just go full terrorism batman doesn't know It's their hubris that's going to get them, Batman. So many people talking to each other every day, all their foolish little words. But little did they know I've put a bomb in all their cell phones. <laughs> you have 24 hours, Batsy. <laughs> God damn. Uh, did, 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 did I skip past the, uh, the, the wounding and hold on. recording, recording of the location of mines. <laughs> Remember I told you all this stuff. If you wanted me to look up the specific chapter. So this is just, this is just an insane, it's a terrorist attack and a massive war crime. <laughs> Terrible.
first attack in a massive war crime. This might be one of the biggest war crimes, uh, like area wise, like ever created, like ever done. Like it might, it, it's, it's probably not going to quite equate to like the mass death of shout out to Israel. Oh, what about the Holocaust? I know, I know, man. I know, I know. Technically a genocide, not necessarily a war crime. As far as a war crime operation goes, this is definitely one of the most wide ranging I've ever even heard of as just a single incident and not a collection of multiple incidents just a single a single mass bombing indiscriminate mass bombing of not even just a civilian center just lebanon sort of in general just <laughs> anywhere in lebanon oh my god uh consultation let me see i missed I had it there before. Yeah, protection from the effects of minefields, mined areas, mines, booby traps, and other devices. Um, excuse me, this was not a mine. This was not a booby trap. <laughs> With the exception of the forces and missions referred to in subparagraph 2A1 of this article, this article applies only to missions which are performing functions in an area with the consent of the high contracting party or whose on whose territory the functions are performed. The application on the provisions of this article to parties of conflict... <laughs> This is, oh, that's just who, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so this is your, this is your responsibilities if you use the mines. Uh, it wasn't the section I was looking for, it's a little higher up. But basically, you have to take measures that are necessary to protect the force or mission from the effects of mines, booby traps, and other devices. So you have to mitigate harm by making sure that non- Mission ascent, like the non targeted individuals are not harmed, which, you know, what, what, what were we at on the other plan? 2,400, 4,800, I don't know, a few thousand, some, so many thousands of people injured. Inform the head of the force or mission of the location of all known minefields, mined areas, mines, booby traps, and other devices in the area which the force or mission is performing its functions and, so far as feasible, make available to the head of the force or mission all information in its possession concerning such minefields, mined areas, booby traps, and other devices. Basically, tell your friends to. High contracted party, technological cooperation assistance, removal of minefields. This is a good one. Without delay, after the cessation of all of hostile activities, all minefields, mined areas, mines, booby traps, and other devices shall be cleared, removed, destroyed, or maintained in accordance with Article Three and Paragraph Two of Article Five of this Protocol. High contracting parties and parties parties to a conflict bear such responsibility with respect to minefields, mined areas, mines, booby traps, and other devices and areas under their control. With respect to minefields, mined areas, mines, booby traps, and other devices. Laid by a party in areas over which it no longer exercises control, such a party shall provide to the party in control of the area, area pursuant to paragraph two of this article, to the extent permitted by such party, technical and material assistance necessary to fulfill such a responsibility. So it's actually on Israel. <clears throat> They're going to say that hostilities haven't ceased, but you're not at war with Lebanon and it's Lebanese territory. So you're... You're violating this. I mean, obviously, probably not everybody's like signed up to it. It doesn't matter. The point of this is that this is just disgusting behavior. Not signing or joining in these accords does not make the behavior permissible. This is what makes people hate you. And this is what makes anti-insurgent operations go indefinitely, which is what most of the IDF uh, uh, muckety mucks want. If you guys want to read more of that, otherwise it's going to be me going into it forever over and over and over again. It's literally just a chunk of the Geneva Conventions, it, it, it all makes immediate sense. There's, there's going to be next to nothing in there that you're not going to go like, oh yeah, that should happen. People don't do that. <laughs> it's, if you don't, if you don't subscribe and adhere to the Geneva Conventions, which are the most softball, obvious rules of warfare that could possibly exist, you're like a demon. Like you're, you're a monster for doing that. Like it, it's, it's, you have to be engaged in active desire to not, not to, achieve a military goal but to just cause harm to f everybody that is within your area of operations and as far as i understand israel considers whatever the f israel is thinking of in the exact moment it has a thought as its area of operations it's, it's, it's profoundly disgusting so let me go back here inhumane weapons uh oh yeah that's even more of this it does it's wounding in here 
Oh, yeah. Prohibitions on the use of booby traps and other devices. God damn it. Without prejudice to the rules of international law applicable in armed conflict relative to treachery and perfidy, it is prohibited in all circumstances to use booby traps and other devices which are in any way attached to or associated with internationally recognized protective emblems, signs or signals, sick, wounded or dead persons, burial, cremation, sites or graves, medical facilities, equipment, supplies or medical transportation, Children's toys or other portable objects or products specifically de designed for the feeding, health, hygiene, clothing, or education of children, food or drink, kitchen utensils or appliances, except in military establishments, military locations, or military supply depots, objects clearly of a religious nature, historical monuments, works of art, or places of worship, which constitute the cultural her spiritual heritage of peoples or animals or their carcasses. It is prohibited to use booby traps or other, other devices in the form of apparently harmless portable objects, which are specifically designed and constructed to contain explosive material. <clears throat> the booby traps in this case what they're t saying is you can't booby trap a fork and like go away with it if you have a area that people are going to take over you can mine the f out of it if you're about to like lose a fort right and you can attach like a f like a little string or a, or a pressure plate to underside like of a fork or something stupid like that a tin can of food that blows it up and kills the person that's that's touching him that's fine you can't make a f device that seems harmless that you can take away from the battlefield and then detonate in an uncontrolled area it's just so obvious it's got its own individual rule without prejudice to the provisions of article 3 is prohibited to use weapons to which this article applies in any city town village or other area containing a similar concentration of civilians in which combat between ground forces is not taking place or does not appear to be imminent Unless either they are placed on or in the close vicinity of a military objective or measures are taken to protect civilians from their effects. For example, the posting of warning sentries, the issue of warnings or provision of fences. That's it. In every way conceivable, a violation of numerous parts of the Geneva Conventions. We're entering a new type of warfare. Yeah, Joker brand terrorism. Even I wouldn't do that, Batman. I have my morals. God damn, bro. <sighs> Is it more likely that the Mossad did it, not the IDF? He did this before to a terrorist named Yaka Ayash with an exploding phone. I, I, in my mind, the IDF and the Mossad are indistinguishable. It. I'm just saying the same thing as the Israeli military in my mind. If they have a distinct separation like the CIA and the army, I, I don't I don't particularly care. I think IDF spokespeople were giving information about this, unless it was just like the Israeli head of state or something like that, but either way. If you want to look up that, that's the that the reference I was using was the Geneva Conventions. Uh, I guess maybe Israel is not a signatory. I know we're not a signatory on everything. But the point of the matter is, is that it's just basic decency. It doesn't hamper military operations in any way because most of the things that are legal are just like gross that more are more likely or as likely to kill civilians as cause any harm to, to troops in a way to so, like sufficiently achieve a goal this is why i'm very irritated um with 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 loner box specifically today but also with destiny to a lesser extent destiny basically did the same thing like two months ago the guy's been deep in books about this that and the other occupation blah 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 tell me about i don't give a f i have an 1865 i don't give a f <laughs> nothing that you can tell me justifies any violation of the geneva convention that's the point i don't care i don't care i don't care what your what, what what i don't care about your dead family or friends i don't care who got tortured or set on fire or what was stolen from you you don't get to break the geneva conventions idiot that's why they're there because people get ass mad and start doing stupid shit that makes the war never f end grow up fight war like a adult with coldness in your heart and a complete unconcern for anything but the objectives and ending the war. That's it. You know, become an adult. I mean, our CIA really does do the same kind of shit. No. When? Did we? I haven't heard of it. When did we send thousands? What? what I, hundreds, dozens of mind... Of, of of booby trapped communications devices somewhere did we do that if we did then we're 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 war criminals as well in that specific respect that everybody that was involved in that operation should probably go to jail for a little bit 
Did we do that? If we did, okay, f- holy, f- but like, goddamn, I've never heard of something like this. And this is one of the few things that I, I keep my ears perked up for because I'm so interested in psychotic comic book villain plots being carried out by legitimate actual f- countries. And it, it, it's insanity. Super villain grade madness. Uh, who, calendar man has been employed by the IDF. Do you think the Israel is using the Geneva Conventions as a checklist? Maybe it's toilet paper. That's pretty much f- though. Are Hezbollah's missile strikes at stadiums full of children okay, or they're irresponsible too? They're obviously irresponsible too, you f- moron. Uh, I'm sorry. Do terrorists doing terrorism make you make it okay for you to be a terrorist, you f- dipshit? Goddamn. W- 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 are you out of your f- mind? <laughs> Maybe we should all just do terrorism. Maybe we should all just start firing the nukes off. Maybe we should all just f- start mustard gassing civilian populations. Like, are you out of your mind I swear to god only f- Israel supporters can routinely try to justify stooping to the level of terrorists to 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 justify violations of the Geneva Convention well the terrorists did it why can't i what in the f- how f- disgusting you f- dogs you beasts you f- animals i can i've never been more disgusted by an entire f- country full of people in my goddamn life like i know it's not every israeli's fault but y'all gotta f- get this sh- in you gotta get this sh- in check because you're gonna run out of time for us to support you out of the f- repercussions of permitting this sh- to happen and th- that's gonna be on you that day we'll show up eventually like a month in you know what i mean oh f- Y'all need some bottled water and MREs? What happened? Did you get invaded by everybody again? Were they mad? Yeah, I bet they were f***ing mad. Maybe you should stop doing all that dumb shit that you do. No, you're not gonna? Okay. <laughs> we'll be back in another year. Probably gonna have to bring less MREs this time, f***ing idiots. God damn. You're not America. Stop trying to f- Stop trying to pull your f- out like you're us. Can we force Hamas Hezbollah to respect the war, the rules of war? Yeah, Israel is the only one that has to follow them because Israel's the one that's supposed to be a legitimate state worth defending. That's the point. You're supposed to be good enough at combat. You can win while following the Geneva Conventions, you f- dog. You, you rat. <laughs> you disgusting, flea-ridden creature. Are you out of your f- mind? Oh, Daddy America. Daddy America, they have, they have, they have committed a terrorism, but they won't permit me to do a terrorism too. Daddy America, why can't I do a terrorism? Dip, bro. Losers. Loser mentality. I'm not gonna fucking take y'all to you. Losers. God damn, you are lucky I pay my taxes. It's gonna end. You can talk all that you want. I don't give a. I don't give a about y'all. I don't care but you're not gonna f- end this thing in a way that's gonna go good for you and if we stop paying for it y'all must f- gonna be in a bad spot when it comes to sit at that f- negotiation table i'm telling you that right now <laughs> we won in f- 45 okay yeah good for you man every that that was after the f- uh entire region was already decimated by f- world war ii anyway i don't know if you know this but they got some of them got their f- together in the f- interim and they all got goddamn planes and f- now it's a little bit different than the seven day war <laughs> ding dongs and yeah, just because evil people do evil doesn't mean you can do it back to them and not be evil i mean what is like literally it, when i you speak to a f- israeli supporter or a zionist and that you have to talk to them about their moral f- concerns in this world it is literally like being f- batman talking to a batman villain or, or, or like a like an over excited vigilante you know what i mean why can't i kill them because when a man goes out and kills a murderer, now nah, there's just another murderer. <laughs> it's like, I gotta f- 
be your goddamn big brother to an entire country full of adults and like literally like well terrorism is the tool of the enemy <laughs> break it <laughs> dork asses what is that little guy a little lemon a little a little that's the the sweetest thing i've ever seen why do you take you took the, the wind out of my sails thank you for the 20 dollar super sticker i think that's called it's beautiful and i love it thank you terrorism is the tool of the enemy <laughs> No, Robin. No, Robin. <laughs> but Batman, the Joker has gassed us for too long. Batman, Robin, we do not use the tool of the enemy. We do not just indiscriminately gas civilians. God, good golly gas, Batman. You're right. Joker watching Israelis do anything militarily like what the f <laughs> holy f Batman and then you put bombs in the pages and you just sent them out my god what the f is wrong with you people Ah, uh, dead children that have been playing a video game. It seems that BB Netanyahu is back in town. <laughs> Great Geneva Conventions, Batman. If BB Netanyahu's here, he's going to indiscriminately slaughter everybody. We only have 24 hours to act, Robin. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't take your side, Batman. Normally, I wouldn't take your side, Batman, but he's really killing my groove. I'm the only one here supposed to be doing any of this. <laughs> Riddler, tell me where the drones are going. You already know where they're going, Batman. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuck, they're going to a wedding. Oh my god, bro. We have to get rid of the bomb. All right, so uh, earlier today I got into a little uh, uh, Twitter back and forth with Lonerbox regarding the pager attack. Oh, before I 100% before I, before I get into it, what I think the pagers were, right? People were saying it was a lithium battery explosion. I don't think the lithium battery is strong enough uh, considering the wounds I've seen and the overall damage. Um, Watching lithium go off, it doesn't seem like it's much more powerful than a firecracker. Uh, I don't think it could probably blow the casing of a thing apart, but I don't think it caused mass shrapnel injuries and, and fatalities more than likely. I would have to see a lot more evidence that it has that kind of yield. But if it had three, roughly three ounces of explosive in it, my guess is it was specifically they took the actual normal battery out, replaced it with a smaller battery, and in place of the battery, they probably put literally a pinky's worth of debt cord crimped into a standard um, electric top blasting cap that would that would be roughly three ounces of explosive and funnily enough when i was in the military we were making a joke about how much debt cord it would actually take to blow a guy's dick off and my buddy said like literally a thumb or less who was he was an assault man so uh, uh and he was an explosive specialist that dealt with debt cord and blasting caps and stuff so an electric top blasting cap. It doesn't need that much explosive to, to go off. Oh, yeah. I have some pictures here real quick I can go over before we get into the loaner box thing. So, like, if you see here, um, this is a... Wait, can I get that? Can you make that bigger? There we go. This is a, a picture of one of them, right? Uh, you see this shrapnel right here? This looks like the remnants of a, of a blasting cap to me. It could be something else, but blasting caps look kind of like this. They are silvery. Um, they're silvery little uh, tubes. They're like this long. They're actually they're they're, they're like long tubes, kind of like a the width of about of a pen, with um, about that long. And there's an end of it that you crimp into stuff to either set it off or that it can it can blow up on its own, right? Depending on kind of how the, the crimping a detonator is like one of the most dangerous things that you can do as as an assaultman. 
it's just a whole thing. Um, this kind of looks like what those blasting caps look like when they blow up. Uh, blasting caps are, they're explosive, but they are an initiator device. So they blow up another explosive. So a blasting cap with just a little bit of um, Semtex around it or crimped into the end of a bit of deck cord. The deck cord would be easier to work with than probably Semtex. If you're trying to stick it into all these things, you could do it either way. Um, but I think that if they put it and they just bent the deck cord in there, it would probably be the best overall impact because when you mold the Semtex, the actual molding of it changes the explosive properties of it, the actual shape of an explosive literally down to like if it's a triangle or a square will change the overall express explosive rate of a of a of a bomb you know of any si any type of detonated explosive the debt cord will always maintain the same shape because it's pre-made it looks like a playstation controller cord it's pre-made you crimp it into the end and then you don't have to worry about people f***ing up while handling it or doing something like making one that doesn't go off and they have like their thumbprint in it or something like that um, also you could pre-make a bunch of those and they would be way more stable and way less, uh, you wouldn't have to do as much to keep them set. So you just have somebody making like a whole table of those and then you bump, chomp, bump, chomp, bump, chomp, bump, chomp, bump, chomp, bump, chomp, put them all in the, uh, put them all in the pager shells. Blasting caps used to be called jawbreakers because the soldiers who got issued them would hold them with their mouth and blow their jaw off if they bit down on them. Yup. Yeah. It's a joke still to this day. Ryan Macbeth, dude was saying it couldn't be explosives because of airport security, which is dumb. They probably never went near a plane. The other issue with that is um, there's a short life on these things, right? Uh, I don't think lithium has the yield that you would want from it. I, I just, I've never heard of lithium being used as an explosive before. If it had a lot of potential for it, people would be doing it all the time. Like that's just kind of the, how it works. I would rather go with two if I was going to do a, some sort of operation, work with stuff that I know how much yield I'm going to get out of it and that it's actually going to go off when I want it to go off. He said it could heat up, you know what I mean? And then detonate or it could like sabotage the battery. I don't think that's remotely possible. The, the way that explosives work are very similar. Think of a capacitor, an electrical capacitor that stores up a charge, right? Um, there are a series of those, right? Getting way, way bigger. You need multi-stage detonations. I have this. I have this picture. Hold on. Let me make sure I get to it the right way. Okay, cool. So I have this. You have multi-stage detonations just to teach you how this use it, this works. Um, pyrotechnic fuse blasting cap. So this is the output explosive, right? You see how this works? These things go in to this and then blow up this. So each thing that's behind this has to blow up the thing in front of it. And what that allows you to do is blow up bigger and bigger things. Even the atomic bomb is actually made out of mortar shells, one of the original ones, if I remember correctly. It's made out of mortar shells, which have primers in them, very basic, simplistic components, and those primers are initiated, which makes the mortar shell go off, which makes the actual plutonium or uranium charge, however the f*** that works in there, makes that detonate the appropriate way once it's like milled down and stuff. So you have these staged explosions. So whenever you have an explosion, you need that. Uh, explosions kind of have to have that capacitor effect where they bleed out all of their information or their information, all of their energy at once to be explosive. That's the kind of point. Heating something up slowly is kind of antithetical to working toward an explosion. It's kind of like, oh, why is this thing getting hot? You would set it down kind of deal. Um, also, trying to put so much energy from a battery back into itself, you know what I mean, to heat it up, um, I don't know exactly how that would work. Someone could explain it to me, um, if you thought it was possible, but that's kind of like burning off the energy anyway. Cause if the thing is using energy to set itself off, you're going to be decreasing the overall energy. Whereas in these cases, they're highly efficient. The other thing is with these that, and it's the case here too. I don't see an exploded battery. Um, we have this little thing. This is a little technical case. We got a metal piece right here. Um, these chunks, this thing's absolutely shredded. Uh, I feel like I would see a bigger battery case. And I think what they did is they took out the larger lithium battery or the AA battery components and probably put in something. You don't need a lot of energy to set off the, um, those blasting caps, right? It's, it's a tiny amount. So actually, if you see all back in the day, you clap that little thing. Some of those are, uh, friction, I believe I could be wrong about that or nine volt, but if you just switch that out with like a 
hearing aid battery that's going to be harder for these people to find, right? Um, you can use all the rest of that space to put in the explosive component. I think that's probably more than likely what actually happened. So you put in a device and then just had a way to clip it into the rest of the unit. Oh God, Lunar Box is stupid. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, see why could why would I why would I debate uh some <laughs> time? It's a non-directed attack and a war crime, Goofy. Why the fuck is this a multiple choice question? Your first sentence was flat out false. What the fuck are you talking about? It's non-directed. You, to, a directed attack has a f certain target and a, a certain pathway. That's the direct, right? It's a direction. Think of an arrow. An arrow has a direction, right? Okay. If you are here and there's a thing at the other end of the arrow, that's directed. If you are here, there is no arrow, and the thing that you're sending out goes almost anywhere, that is now undirected. It's pretty simple. <laughs> oh my god. I... Loner box out here. Uh, I don't know if you understand this, um, but I've been uh, I've been a Destiny waiting room for a while, so I'm pretty up to date on how the military works. <laughs> I can't do his accent at all. <laughs> I assure you, I loner box. I got the fuck. I'm dialed in on directed and non-directed attacks. Okay, Goofy. Oh, are we still unstable? Tyler, lithium batteries don't really explode. They combust. Yeah, the pop that I saw looked slow for like a chemical reaction. It's very... <laughs> but if you hear that <laughs> like that, that's accelerant kind of. That's more combustion. Uh, explosives blow up at certain rates and the rate at which they explode actually changes what they do uh, we get into explosives technology. Some explosives are what you would call cutting explosives. The higher volatility uh, or the higher high volatility expressiveness. I think I'm that up completely. But basically the uh, the higher levels of like Semtex, C4, those are cutting, right? So they're actually supposed to blow up so fast that they split things apart, right? Um, and they'll right? That's a real bomb. Most bomb bombs are like a cutting explosive. Um, then there's pushing explosives, which have a less overall output. They're slower technically, right? So this is like your ammonium nitrate roadside type bombs. Um, things that are a little less, how to say it? Um, a little less pure as far as their burn rate to gas expression. And so when they don't push that hard, they push slower and for a longer amount of time. We're talking millisecond differences, right? And so those kind of bombs are used to push stuff like and knock it over. Because um, it's really just think about uh, it, it, it might sound crazy to you, but just think about how you would blow on a candle versus like how you would try to blow up a balloon, how that's kind of like is different, right? Or if you were trying to uh, what's a better one? Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. If you're trying to like cool off, imagine somebody's a woman just painted or anybody. So I'm sorry. They them. Someone just painted their nails, right? And they're right? That blowing is an expression of gas at a certain speed over a certain amount of time. That slower one does something different. Oops, sorry. Thank you, the DJ baby. That does something different than if you're trying to blow out a candle. <laughs> like that. Boom. All at once. But if you were trying to blow a card right across a table you know like a little playing card and that longer period of time now extrapolate those down or compress those down into like millisecond time changes and then you can kind of get into why there's different levels of expressiveness in different types of explosives this is at least how it was explained to me while i was in the united states marine corps from a guy who was an explosive expert <laughs> I, he could be wrong it's not like he kept doing that he's a barber now <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your time on